limit switches. What are they for? And why don't I have any? Hello fellow CNC nuts and welcome. The other day I was asked a question about limit switches and I thought I'd give you a quick rundown on my thoughts on limit switches, what they're used for and why I don't actually have any on my machine. So without further ado, let's have a look at it. Here we have two common types of micro switch used for limits. We have this type here, a basic lever switch. The lever operates the little contact here just pushes down on the little switch, has a common point, a normally open and a normally closed contact. This one here again is very similar except it has a roller on the end here and it has the common contact with the normally open and normally closed. I brought these switches here with a view to mounting them on my machine when I built them but as it turned out I never installed them. Now it's not laziness that stopped me putting the limit switches on my machine. It's more the realization that I don't actually need them. There are three types of limits I can have on my machine. I can have limit switches. When the carriage runs into a limit switch, it sends an electrical signal to the controller software which tells it that it's now reached the boundary of the machine and stops it. The second type are soft limits. These are defined in software and in my opinion are absolutely useless. They rely on a zero point on the machine that you have to set every time you restart your machine. The software then knows that from that point it can travel a certain distance in the X and Y plane. If you set that machine as zero point incorrectly or forget to set it at all, then the machine will not be able to travel the full extent of its table. It may get halfway across that table and decide, oh, well, this is the end of the limit, and stop. And you find you can't use half your table. On the other hand, it may wish to actually run a lot further off to the other side where you actually don't have any table there at all. So soft limits really aren't much use. The ones that you do definitely need are hard limits. In my case, the x-axis has built-in hard limit in that it cannot travel outside the vertical uprights of the rail. On the y, there is no such upright, and without the hard limits installed, the gantry can actually run off either the back or the front of the machine. And I can think of nothing more terrifying than a router spinning at 10, 12,000 RPM heading towards you at groin level at high speed if you don't have hard limits in place. So what use are limit switches then? Well on a machine like mine with dual drive on the y-axis you can actually use limit switches to square the machine up. And it's really important that you do keep the machine square. With dual drive it can easily get out of square. If you push on it while the machine's off you can knock the gantry out of square very easily. With a single push of a button, the machine will automatically square the y-axis up so that it's ready to cut. They also, of course, stop the machine when it runs to the extents of its cutting area. Now, of course, I don't have limit switches on my machine, so how do I square my gantry? Well, it's really very easy and simple. All I have to do is simply grab my gantry and pull it until it hits those hard limits my gantry is now square. Likewise, I know that I don't need limit switches on it to stop it running out of the area of cutting because it can't run any further than its hard limits. What happens if you have dual drive but you actually have lead screw? You can't pull a gantry like I just did on mine. Well again, that's very easy. The second option is you simply Start the machine running and run it into the hard limits. Once it hits those hard limits, it will stop and the gantry will be square. So by now you're thinking, why have we even got limit switches? Well, they do have a place. If you have, for instance, an auto tool changer, 
then it's really important the machine know exactly where it is at any given point in time so it can go back to that auto tool changer to change cutter. Likewise, if you have a spot on the table that you use for automatically zeroing the machine, it's really important that the machine know exactly where that is as well. And by having limit switches, you can make the machine automatically home itself before it starts cutting, and then the machine knows exactly where everything is. But for home machines like mine, I just don't see the need for it. But wait, what about resetting a zero point on a cut when you've lost position? Well, not really. There are much easier ways of finding where you started than to actually uh, use limit switches. First option is simply mark where X and Y zero was when you started the cut. One other option I've occasionally used if I've lost position is find perhaps a hole that I've drilled. That's at a known point. If I drop the cutter in the hole, I know exactly where I am. Another way of relocating the zero point is to simply use a device like Bill Griggs's triple edge finder. You can find those over at cncroutertips.com. I'll put a link in the description box below for you. So you don't really need limit switches to find a lost pos X, Y position either. Well, what about the Z axis? Well, I can put one at the top of the Z axis travel, but all that'll do is just stop it a little bit sooner than it would have anyway. My Z axis will simply travel up until it runs out of room to move and stop. You can't burn a stepper motor out by stalling. It doesn't matter how long you stall it for. They're not like conventional motors. What about the bottom of the z-axis? Well, depending on where I set it, either this short cutter won't reach the spoil board, or this one will go right through the spoil board and out the other side before the limit switch actually trips. Again, limit switches on the z-axis to me seem a bit useless. I think that limit switches are really good for commercial machines, and especially for things that are, are being done uh, repetitively, if, you're, if I was at IKEA cutting out kit sets all day, I think I'd probably appreciate limit switches, especially if I had a tool changer. But for the home builder, I personally don't see the need for it. Now, don't let me discourage you from putting limit switches on your machine. And hey, maybe there's a reason that I haven't thought of that might actually make it worth doing, but I just can't see what it is. I've run my machine now for many, many years and uh, never need to limit switch on them. Just my personal opinion, guys. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you haven't already subscribed, why not do so now? And I'll catch you guys later. Cheers.